is pouring in, I'm just going to get started with, uh, with this presentation. So a brief overview of, of things I'm going to talk about. Um, you can't teach that much about design in 50 minutes. Um, but what I want to do is kind of instill in you some core concepts uh, from some different design methods. And uh, also, I kind of want this to be a commercial for, um, for how design can help you, how you can get excited about design, um, and how we can get it into our like, development process. So uh, the first thing I'm going to go over a little bit is design thinking, uh, which was developed by um, developed with a company called IDEO and um, the Stanford Design School, which is a, a small organization within Stanford, which actually isn't a degree uh, giving school, but it's where they take their engineering students um, or mathematics students, pretty much any student within um, Stanford can go to the design school and learn some of these concepts and find ways to apply them to their own, um, their own disciplines. Uh, the next thing I'll, I'll want to cover is visual design, and within that we'll talk a little bit about color and uh, a little bit about layout. Again, visual design isn't, isn't something that we can cover fully in 50 minutes, and, uh, and it, especially just as a talk, it'd be great to do something interactive on a like, day-long session. And then we'll talk about design communication, um, which t to me within uh, design Communicating design between teams and, uh, and critiquing design to get better feedback, to create better products, is what design is all about. Um, so those are two things we'll talk about. Here at Cintra, we have uh, a tagline that you guys have all seen for this conference and just for Cintra in general. It's design, develop, test. Um, and so I wanted to use that as a metaphor for what design can do for us just in general. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, design. design first. To me, design is all about planning. If we can have a plan ahead of, of time um, or quickly, quickly plan something out, uh, our process, once we get into develop and testing, is going to have a roadmap. So um, in the planning stage, we want to talk about researching. We, uh, within researching, we want to talk to users, and we want to identify problems. Uh, to me, for design, de the development process is prototyping. This is where we can take everything that we learned from our planning and research stages and put it into some sort of physical form, whether that's a paper sketch or, um, or a full, full, fully coded or um, clickable prototype. And uh, I can talk about some tools if anyone's interested in building clickable prototypes. There's a lot of different tools that um, that I've tried out and, and can recommend. Um, and then the last step is critique. This is, this is the testing step. Um, and within design, I find critique to be one of the most important stages. Because without critique, our designs are pointless. We have, we have no plan unless we can test it and get feedback. Um, so with the critique process, you, you can create your design, your general plan, share it with your team, share it with users, get feedback, and then iterate from there. Once you, have, once you have good critique, you know whether you have a bad design, bad product, or just an idea that needs to be tweaked. So the first thing um, I'll briefly go over is design thinking. As I mentioned, uh, excuse me, for those of you who are just coming in, design, the design thinking method was developed uh, at the D School at Stanford where they teach design. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the core concepts of design thinking. The first step is empathize with your users. Um, I think this is the, the human aspect of design and development where that we all want to, you know, <laughs> press upon each other is we're creating products for people, whether they're enterprise products, things that are used within our organizations or their user-facing products, they're still used by humans. So if we can put ourselves in our users' shoes, we're going to be able to plan and create better products. Um, one of the, the issues with, um, within enterprise organizations, or even with my own organization that I, I find hard to escape from even myself, is uh, we get so close to our products 
or even our, even our core users since we're working alongside them, or maybe we are a core user of our product, uh, we begin designing and developing for ourselves. And this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so what happens when we design for ourselves? We start creating the best product imaginable, right? It has all the bells and whistles that we would ever want. But sometimes when we start adding all these bells and whistles onto our products, we start getting uh, these monoliths of, of products. We start having all of the, the uh, feature bloat that we don't want. Um, another, uh, another product, and, and this is just getting a little, a little away from empathizing with your users, but uh, just thinking of monolithic products. Uh, in a lot of user-facing products we, uh, that we all know and love, um, I'm going to use Instagram as, as an example, we start with these really basic concepts, um, very simple products, post a photo, share it with your friends. We all love that, right? And then some other product comes along and has another method of sharing photos with your friends. Um, and Instagram sees that that product is successful, and so they want to steal that and put it into their product, right? Um, if you're an Instagram user, you might know what I'm talking about. In addition to being able to share photos with your friends on Instagram, you can now share uh, kind of destructive photos like you can in Snapchat. This is when we start getting bloated products with, uh, I think the design term for it is feature creep, if you're familiar with that. Um, so once we get away from the core function that our users actually need, um, we're, we're no longer in our, in our users' shoes. We're no longer emphasizing and connecting with them. Um, so that brings me to our next step. Defining your users' needs, understanding their problems, and then translating those into insights to uh, inform your design and development process. Um, in, excuse me, let me take one step there. Sorry, I get a little uh, parts when I'm talking. Um, as I mentioned in my last, uh, last talk, it's, it's good to stay hydrated. <laughs> so anyway, defining our users' needs. Um, Within the design thinking framework, um, I imagine this is part of your research process. Uh, getting out there, interviewing your users, getting um, prototypes in front of them, and, and actually doing how they use things to in identify their pain points, their needs, and, uh, and creating maybe a feature list. Or, if you already have a feature list developed, you can start crossing things out that you don't need, right? We've all taken like a samurai sword to our feature list and gotten rid of things that we loved, I hope. Defining our user, users' needs. We need, to, <laughs> we need to talk to our users, we need to do research, and we need to develop a feature list that we can, we can then ideate from. Um, ideation is our sketch phase, right? That's when we get things onto paper and we get things onto paper quickly. We create, and you can kind of tie it in with your prototype phase. I would imagine uh, in the design thinking um, framework, Prototyping is a little more advanced than just ideating, uh, but I can see them as, as related concepts. Um, and one, one thing with the design thinking framework that you want to remember is, is it's iterative, so you're going back to defining your needs after you've already started ideating, and you're going back to research after you've prototyped. Um, everything is interchangeable, and it's all iterative. Uh, the final st step after you prototype your solution is be able to test that with your, with your key users um, to validate those solutions. Is the, is the, are the ideas that you came up in the ideate phase solving the problems that you defined um, in, in the defined stage? Um, and I think this framework kind of aligns with uh, what, we're, what my concept here or metaphor is here with the Arsentia design develop test. We're able to uh, come up with our feature list. We're able to um, design first, then develop, and then we're able to test. Of course, in the central world, we all know that that is a lot more just uh, coding, coding, and then testing. Uh, so, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about research. Um, I like to say it, try before you buy. So the, the title of my presentation is um, Design Concepts for, for Better Product Development. Um, I really want to say this over and over again, and you're going to 
hear it a few times before the end. Um, the reason we want to design things is so we can save time, save money, and uh, do less work, right? No one wants to do more work, and no one is lazier than designers. So um, hopefully developers can learn a thing, thing or two from us. <laughs> Who hates designers, by the way? <laughs> Sorry, I, I just like to get that laugh out of developers. I hate designers, too. Um, but at the same time, I love them. It's just a little bit of like self-hate going on. Um, so research me methods. This is design thinking all over again. We need to define a need or a problem. Um, one way we can do that is, uh, or one, once we've defined our need or problem through user research, market research, we can go back and uh, see, have other people solve this problem. Are there viable solutions out there? Or, um, or maybe there are solutions out there that actually aren't good enough solutions. Maybe uh, we're doing research on how other people have solved this problem. Um, and you can test that against your users and see what their pain points are with that solution and develop uh, your own unique solution or innovative solution for that. Um, and one important step, I think, in research is defining who your target persona is. Um, like, uh, like I said earlier, we are not our users. We can't design for ourselves. So if we're able to de determine who our target persona is, um, whether that's a role within a, their company, um, if, if I'm designing something for developers, my persona is a developer. Um, and oftentimes, we might want to get a little more precise with that. So we can create a persona which is um, just uh, an actual person that we want to talk to, whether it's a real person in real life or a fictional character that we create. Um, if, I'm, if I'm creating something for a developer, maybe I'll use uh, Mark who gave the keynote today. That's, that's the type of developer that I want to design for. So I can interview Mark and create uh, this target persona around him. And then I have a user that I can design for. I'm no longer uh, drawing from my own influences or my own background to uh, try to understand who this product is for. Um, and in doing so, uh, creating a persona, I might conduct interviews to understand people. Or I might observe users using similar products. Or um, once I'm at the stage where I'm prototyping, I might want to uh, put that product in front of a user and understand how they use it um, and whether my, whether my design is successful. Um, so the, uh, the next stage is probably my favorite. Sketch, critique, repeat. Um, in uh, in uh, the Ubisoft talk, uh, sorry, I'm blanking on his name. He said, uh, drawing is worth a thousand words. And I thought that was um, a great, great thing to bring up. Um, you can talk through an issue which I think is very important to design is to be able to talk through something or write about it or even jump into code right away and start building something out. But if you're able to spend 10 minutes and sketch something out and understand that it's a bad idea, you, just, you probably just saved um, at least 1,000 words. And if it's a good idea, then you know, you're further ahead then. And that's why I say talk is cheap, and so is sketching. Um, Develop, you know, we all know how expensive and, and we don't want to waste time on, uh, on development if we don't have to. So I really, really want to advocate to sketch out your ideas, whether you're a developer and you think you can't sketch, you can't draw at all, draw some boxes. Um, and I'll talk at the end of this slide a little bit about some ways where even if you don't know how to draw, you can still sketch something great. Um, so, uh, you know, methods for sketching, you can draw with a pen or paper. And uh, has anyone used Cincha stencils, our stencil kit? You, you've used it? Awesome. Um, what, uh, what format have you used it in? For what program? Uh, for the I'm sorry? Uh, the Adobe. Oh, Adobe Illustrator? OK, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cincha stencils. It's our um, wireframing kit. It's free to download through our Cincha website. 
Um, and we have, we have versions for Adobe Illustrator, uh, Sketch, which is a drawing program. Um, and we also have like PNG and SVG versions of the stencils that you could use in any drawing program you want. Um, I think I've talked to some people who actually do prototyping and wireframing in um, uh, Excel. Has anyone talked to anyone who's done prototyping in Excel? Has anyone done prototyping in Excel? Yeah? Is it great? Yeah, not so bad. <laughs> not so bad? Well, I, think, I hope that we have you covered with, with the SVG versions. Um, I love the innovative solutions that people come up with. Um, some of these programs can get expensive or we can't get them approved uh, by people above us. Um, so if, if we can come up with innovative solutions, that's kind of what, uh, what design and development, I think, is all about. So let me show you uh, our balsamic version of, of stencils, which is um, one of my favorites. I, I actually use Sketch more often, but I really love the concept of Basomic. It's this completely um, themeless drawing program where you can quickly create a mock-up. So in, in Basomic, if you're familiar with it or if you're not, there's, um, there's all these different assets that you can draw from. Um, say if I, if I wanted to draw a user interface that has, has a button and a date picker. That's easily clickable and draggable. And, um, you know, and I want all of those to be within my, some type of container tab bar or something. I can quickly drag those onto my, uh, my canvas. But, um, that doesn't help us if we're developing XJS apps, or maybe you're, um, maybe you're, you want to build a custom component. You can use some of these things that are in here. But with Cintra Stencils, what we've done is create a symbol library of everything that's within um, X, XJS widgets. So, um, in uh, in the last release of Stencils, we created um, all the components and widgets that are in both the classic and the modern toolkits. So um, let, me, let me draw a few things out here that are pretty cool. Uh, I'll pull out this uh, color picker, if you're familiar with the color picker widget. We've got it out there, already drawn out for you. Um, we have basic panels, which is actually just a white box, if you bl can believe that or not. But let's give it a header. And put a button on there. And maybe a grid, let's find, or a form panel, how about that? Form panel's a little bit bigger than a basic panel, so. Um, but even if you can't draw or you feel like you don't wanna draw or you just wanna save time, uh, you can quickly drag and drop and create prototypes using all of these, um, uh, these widgets that we already have drawn out. I'm not going to really build anything. I just want to show you that um, everything's done for you. You don't have to change anything around if you don't want to. Um, and uh, I think it's a, a clever way to prototype, build something, show it to your team, get some feedback, change things around quickly. Um, the other version of stencils that I'll show you is similar to the, um, the Illustrator version. Um, it's the uh, Sketch version. And in here, uh, in the stencil package, we actually have it drawn out in our three um, classic theme or our three classic themes um, that were most recently released, which is uh, Triton, Crisp, and Neptune. Um, I hope you're all familiar with with those in some way. Um, so with within this, you have this library of of all of the widgets that I I have shown you in Basalmic, but uh, these actually have the the Triton theme applied to them. And um, say you want to, to build something with this that looks exactly how uh, you're going to develop it before theming. You have everything here. And I'll show you some examples. These are all just weird app examples that we've created using everything in the stencils library. Um, and on top of that, say you wanted to just quickly see a, a color change. Um, See how this theme would look with a different color. Let me 
select things here. You can kind of um, concept some, some different themes. So I'm going to use this blue, which we use in our, um, in our Centra Tools theme. So in just a few clicks, you could have a prototype built out for whatever your app is going to be. I think this is actually the starter app that you get when you uh, are creating a new XJS project. And I can see what it looks like with my, my base color changed. So just a few, a few fun um, design things that you can do with uh, our Centra products. Okay. That'll lead us into um, visual design. There's a, a few things that, um, that I, uh, I always try to remember when I'm working in visual design. Um, the four principles of design, these were uh, created um, by a d designer named Robin Williams, although it's not the late, great Robin Williams. Uh, it's a nice lady. I think she lived in Arizona last time I like, read her blog or something like that. Um, but the four, four concepts are con uh, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Um, so uh, each, of these, each of these four principles, if we, if we think about these as we're designing our layouts or applications, or even if we're designing some type of uh, publication, um, we always want to remember how these can um, help us. And if we use this as a checklist as we're designing, um, then I think we'll, uh, we know we're doing something right. So contrast uh, is, is a great way to make sure all of your elements are clear. Um, earlier in my th uh, themer demo, I created an app that actually had very low contrast. Uh, that was an example of a bad app design in, in certain ways. Um, but this is, um, this is a concept that we, we apply to when we have these like button UIs that, uh, that will call out things to our users. Say we want um, affirmation when they click something. So what color button are we going to create for that? Green button, maybe? Um, and that's going to be different from all of our, our standard buttons or our toolbar buttons that are maybe gray and, and aren't going to stand out. So we can use contrast to our advantage to create good visual design. Um, the, next, the next thing for uh, the principal designs is repetition. Um, when I'm designing something, I, I often will create a, a style sheet, um, which will have all of, all of my colors and fonts for that design. Um, and the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that I'm true to myself and I'm, I'm repeating elements, I'm repeating colors, and I'm not throwing in things in there that are outside of my design framework or design style guide. Um, and then the next, the next stage is going to be al alignment. Um, have you ever gone to a website or uh, had an application that had center aligned text? Um, does anyone, anyone like feel uncomfortable reading center aligned text for some reason? You have a long line, a skinny line, a long line, a skinny line. Uh, the, like, the human body in general doesn't want to read things where their eyes are moving a lot. So alignment's really important. When you have panels that are misaligned or, um, uh, or buttons that aren't, aren't in like an effective grid system, 12 column grid is something I always use when I'm doing web design. If anyone's familiar with uh, like CSS frameworks, a lot of them implement a 12 column grid to, uh, to have better alignment. And then proximity. I think proximity is, is a good, um, a good concept for visual design, but I think it also plays into good UX. When you understand the proximity of two elements and their relationship to each other, you could um, tell a story to your user that you want them to tell, whether that's um, walking through a navigation and you have two navigation items that are related to each other, or when you click on, on your navigation, you go to your next page, what's the next thing you want them to click on and what is it ex uh, proximity to where their prior click was? Um, so, uh, color associations, um, you can't really, um, teach color theory in, in a short amount of time either. Uh, 
If anyone wants to talk about color theory later, we can talk about that. I always recommend go to the material design guide. There's a lot of uh, like good color combinations there. Um, but uh, I wanted to talk about color associations, which has to do with like the way we perceive colors. So I came up with this like mini game for us to play. So I'm going to list colors on the screen, and uh, I want people to say what they think about when they see that color. So red. I'm, I'm sorry. Danger. Danger. <laughs> do, do we have any other associations with red? Anger. I'm sorry. Stop. So are these is red a negative color? Very. Is it a is it the most negative color? Uh, that's subjective, right? Subjective questioning. Um, what about love? Is love red? Valentine's Day? Uh, so color associations are very subjective, but as, as a group, we all went to danger first. And that's why we have error buttons that come up as red or error messages that are red. If I type something wrong into a form, it doesn't want, I enter the wrong password or I write my email address wrong, it's going to give me a red um, thing. But I, I just th think it's fascinating that, um, that we have these associations that can then be questioned. Uh, what about green? Go. Go. Money. <laughs> we, all like, we all like that one. Um, any other ones for green? Eco-friendly, Eco yeah, that's the one I always come to, the environment, trees. Um, and so green is, is positive in contrast to red, and that's why we use it for um, affir affirmation buttons. Um, if I've typed something right in, I'm going to hit the green check mark, right? What about blue? Soft. Soft? Snuggle? Anyone use snuggle fabric softener? Yeah. Anything else for blue? Cold. I'm sorry? Cold? cold. Yeah, cold. I think those are two, uh, two separate feelings from blue, right? Soft and cold. They're not opposite, but I don't care how soft it is. If it's cold, I, I'm not into it. <laughs> so, uh, has anyone wondered why everything is blue in product design? Like every, every customer facing product has, has like a blue app icon or blue interface. Um, why is my shirt navy blue? Yeah, blue is calming. Blue actually, uh, psych yeah, stable. Psychologists say it instills trust in people. So when in doubt, blue, I guess. Um, has anyone used Cincha and Spectre? Yeah, is that eco-friendly? Yeah. <laughs> what about Cincha Themer? It's blue, right? Cincha, Cincha Inspector has to um, catch up. So since I'm on the um, product design team at Cincha, I've, uh, I've helped build interfaces for Cincha Themer and Cincha Test. And unfortunately, the green interface didn't make the cut when we were defining our new, uh, our new specs for design. But I promise they will catch up. So one last, one last color game, because this is my favorite, pink. No one wants to say? What about, is, is this a pink shirt you're wearing or an orange shirt? I can't see, sorry, the light's in my, yeah, pink is my favorite color. I think of, I think of like uh, softness with pink, but I also think of love and Valentine's Day. Um, so um, just some thoughts on layout. I encourage everyone to develop a grid system. In your sketching phase, if you can sketch on grid paper, make sure everything is aligned to the dots or the, or the little cells within your grid paper. Um, it's a great way to communicate whatever you're, you're sketching into whatever you're prototyping and then in turn developing. Um, plan ahead with layout as always, plan ahead with design. Be thoughtful of where you place elements and be empathetic to your user. This is just everything that I've been saying al already, but everything uh, there applies to layout. Um, these images I stole from a um, uh, CSS layout thing that I was working on. Um, but yeah, 12 column grid is, is great if you're working in CSS. Um, also, I'm 12 column grid. Um, so 
when, when we're designing either on paper or in uh, a program, I can, you can just draw a grid that has 12 columns. And it, it's just an equal number that designers have chosen. Um, let, me, let me show you an example of a, uh, of a 12 column grid. We'll, we'll just Google image search and see what comes up first. Does that sound okay? I know, right? I hope I have, yeah, I hope I have the uh, um, safe filter on. This is a perfect image right here. So the idea behind uh, the 12 column grid is, is to have flexibility. So with a 12 column grid, you can have two, two panels next to each other that take up 50% and 50% of the page, right? Um, say I want something that is two thirds and one third you can have, uh, like on this one, it says 300 and 600. Uh, just a, an easy method for when you're sketching and laying things out um, to, to understand the space that you're using. Um, I think in the, in the Cincha, we have like, um, is it HBox layout? And you can, you can assign um, different values to those, the, the flex to each, each one of those. Sorry, as a designer, I'm trying to like remember all the little like, uh, EXT things that I've heard developers talk about. So th I think that's how that would relate in there. Um, the good thing about EXT is, is a lot of this uh, layout work is done for you, right? Um, but in our design phase, we need to, we need to be thoughtful of, of that so we're not designing anything too crazy or designing anything that our developers um, are going to have a hard time working on. And, uh, and that actually brings me to the handoff handing off uh, our designs to our developers, which um, I think if, if you've designed something and you're completely finished designing it and handing it off to a developer, you're probably doing design, um, you're probably gonna have a hard time with your developer. But if you're talking to your developer as you design, or as you developers are talking to your designers as they design, you're, we're able to inform them of what you can do and can't do or don't wanna do, right? <laughs> um, so I think communication between designers and developers impo is important, and that's why I asked you all how, if you hate your designers, because we need to turn that hate relationship into a love relationship. Um, and what's the best way to uh, form a loving bond or keep a marriage going? Communication, right? I wouldn't know, though. I'm not married and single, so what do I know about communication? <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Yes, dear. <laughs> Don't say that to your designer. Give your designer critique. Um, but just be, be ready for critique yourself. Um, so uh, I talked about, I mentioned style guides earlier. Uh, who's working with a designer at their company? Not a lot of you. What are you doing if you're not working with a designer? Are you just out there hacking away? Or are you the designer? So if you're not working with a designer, you are the designer. So now you're wearing two hats. Um, so anyway, uh, if you are working for a designer, raise your hand if they give you style guides when they hand you off wireframes. A few of you. Unsure? Recently. OK, are they giving you like PDFs or PNGs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what we want, right? That's the goal. Um, so if your designer is not giving you a style guide, you need to go smack them on the top of the head and ask for a proper style guide. Uh, so don't hit them. That's an HR violation. Um, so uh, if they're giving you colors, make sure they're giving you the hex codes at the very least, right? Um, if they're giving you if they're giving you fonts, not just a font name, you want the you want the sizing, um, and if they're if they're giving you wireframes, you want that to be blocked out so you could see the actual sizing of uh, of the elements that you need to make. Maybe it's not just a standard ext button that's um, like 32 pixels high, or a standard ext header that's like 44 pixels high, right? Um, all good maps have a key. So if your wireframe is a map, then your style guide is your key. Um, 
And these could be as specific as, as needed. I've seen, I've seen uh, wireframes that also um, are like style guides where they actually have this, the screen drawn out with everything um, marked up so a developer can see all, what all the specifications are. Um, have you ever had a, anyone ever had a designer or talked to a designer that complains about developers? They hand off a design and they see the, the application or web page come back to them and it's not what they designed? Whose fault is that? Right? Might be the designer's fault. Might be the developer's fault. I don't want to place blame on anyone here. As a designer, I have to stick up for my own kind. But if, uh, if you're not handing off specs, then you might not get, um, get what you need back. So um, as a closing thought before we get into questions, if you guys want to talk with me a little bit longer, um, I just want to say that it's dangerous to go alone. And if you are a fan of uh, The Legend of Zelda, you'll get that joke. But I'm guessing none of you are because you didn't laugh. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, include, include team members from the beginning of your project. If you're not working with a designer, take 10 minutes to sketch something out, show it to the person sitting next to you, and uh, get their feedback. Because feedback is key. That's how we make sure our, our bad ideas are actually bad ideas and our good ideas are actually good ideas. Check in early and often for critique with your team members, with your designers, with your project leaders, product managers, whoever. All feedback is good feedback. Um, but most importantly, uh, uh, keep an open mind, because sometimes you're going to show things to users when you're in your testing phase or um, to your coworkers when you're in your testing phase. They might, might not like a feature that you think is the awesome, the coolest feature you've ever made. And, uh, and I also want to say that when it comes to design, everyone cares. And I think it's proof because in this whole room, I think we only have one other designer besides myself. You guys are all developers, and you all care about design, I'm guessing. Or after today, you don't care about design, and you're just going to leave it up. OK, so uh, we're at 10 minutes. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything? They just want to talk about design. You want to vent to me about how um, bad your designer is? Throw it at me. Here. OK, yeah. Um, so I'll talk about color, color blindness in general. I, um, let me see if I have a tool on my computer still for that, which I should. Mm. So uh, there is a free tool, and I don't think I have it installed on this machine, um, which is basically a color blindness simulator. So what I'll do is I'll, I will uh, create a design and run a color blindness simulator, and it has the three different uh, most common types of color blindness. And what you're checking for with color blindness is contrast, right? That's one of the four principles of design. Do I have good contrast? Um, so if, if you're interested, um, I would probably just Google color blindness simulator, and you can, you can find a couple different programs for that. Um, one other thing when you are dealing with accessibility, especially when it um, deals with color blindness, is uh, there is um, a website that I like to go to, not Color Hex. It's actually colorhexa.com. And they, they simulate, um, nope. See, now I'm having all these, these issues because I'm one of those non-technical people. OK. That's <laughs> Here we go. Let's go to one of these colors. Um, yeah, so in, in Color Hexa, uh, I, go, I went to this color, just some random blue, and it uh, simulates color blindness of those colors. So there's a lot of different tools you can use. Short answer. Yeah, right here. So are you, um, is your designer actually writing the SAS for your EXE code? Yes. OK. Um, 
Have they have they looked into Themer? Well, not yet. Not yet. I, first first thing I would recommend is Themer, right? Because that's my job. Um, <laughs> the the next thing I would I would recommend is um, are are they technical enough to run apps as you're building them? Possibly. Pl possibly. It depends on your development environment, right? Um, so um, I, I would say they should be working with you as they're, as they're developing it. And um, if they are building the theming, I would highly recommend building the prototypes in uh, a drawing program like Sketch. They can use stencils. And, and stencils would actually probably answer your other question. How do they know which components they want you to use? It's all already in stencils. Uh, that doesn't solve the problem of are you creating custom components, right? Uh, but but it, it'll at least get you maybe 60 to 80 percent of the way there. Um, I, uh, I definitely wouldn't want someone to be applying theming to an application unless it was towards the end of development. Um, unless it was, it was smaller things like just changing base color or something like that. Um, but a good tool for uh, while you are developing or starting development for theming is, is Themer, where they could create you, uh, a theme package for you that is um, uh, completely um, separate from your, uh, your code base. And then once you guys are ready to marry those, you can just put that theme package in your packages folder. So. Yeah, perfect. So for EXT, that is, that is my preferred method. I, I understand that there's times when um, CSS is necessary in our, in our application design. But uh, the themer method and the method that I, I always recommend is create your base theme. And then for things that you need to have uh, more customized, create a, a UI for that component. Yeah. Do you have any other? Uh, in the uh, <laughs> okay, Centra Architect, what a great product, right? Scares the heck out of me because every time I try to use Centra Architect, uh, it asks me for some type of developer thing. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, when, from my understanding, when Centra Architect was being built, or if anyone's known Centra long enough, it used to be called Centra Designer, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it's, it's grown into something that's so powerful. I think it's, it's definitely a visual tool for developers. Um, if your designer is brave, I would, definitely, um, I would definitely encourage them to try it out. I haven't gotten there yet, but uh, maybe they can help me. <laughs> we got an, another question? Um, that is something that um, someone on the development team of Themer could answer better than I can. But it, I would, I'm very wary of it. I, I would answer negatively if I was more definitive. I want to say no. I think most things for Themer are six and above. Um, and a lot of it actually has to do with um, the way command and fashion interact with building your app, I think. So that's a broken up answer. I think uh, we have just a couple minutes, maybe one or two more questions if anyone has any. No question? Oh, yeah. Do you guys work remotely a lot? Uh, how do you do uh, whiteboard thing? Yeah, um, so the, our design team uh, is all in Redwood City. Um, and our product management team is all in Redwood City. Um, but when we are doing whiteboarding sessions, a lot of it is Someone drawing something, whether it's on the development team, paper sketch, and taking a picture, and we'll send it back and forth for critique. Um, and if we're just working together, either on a notepad or on a whiteboard, um, the, best, the best way to do that if we're uh, working with someone remote, remotely is like Google Hangouts or something like that. We don't have any, any tool. I know there's some tools that teams use where they can actually like draw on the computer and share, um, share screens um, in a really cool way. Um, other than opening up Photoshop and doing a Google Hangouts with a screen share, I don't have any other technology answer for that. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, I think that might do it for uh, time on us. I want to thank everyone for listening to me talk about design and saying uh, how important it is for the last 50 minutes. If you guys have any other questions or, or um, want to run into me, I'll probably hang out at the Cinch Zone a lot um, for the rest of the conference. Um, or if you just want to talk about theme or any other product, I welcome any questions. Have a great day.